ain't your average entertainment show. More than entertainment than what's on the screen. Connecting dots on what you see. Hello and welcome to the Entertainment Zone. What is up? It's me, Paul Amadeus Lane. And I am so delighted to have you on our show today. We have two amazing guests that you are going to get to know a whole lot better. They are beautiful, amazing, talented women. And make sure you're following them because they are taking the entertainment world by storm. So sit back and relax and enjoy the show. We welcome you who are listening on our flagship station, ABC News Radio affiliate, KMET AM and FM. And we can't forget about you who are watching us on our live stream channels. And those who are tuned in on the Entertainment Zone channel on Fire TV and Roku. And our podcast listeners, what up Spotify? What up iHeart? What up Apple Music? What's up, Apple Podcasts and Amazon Podcasts and Music? Thank you all so much for tuning into the show and supporting the show. So without any further delay, let's get it going, people. My first guest, I had an opportunity to see and make on, eye contact with, I'm sorry, I've got a nervous right now, at NBC's Winter Press Tour. I kind of told the story before and I had an opportunity to interview her a few months back. But it was amazing seeing them come through the door. And we were all like, oh, wow, look, look, that's that's Lacretta. That's Gergs. And we wanted to get to talk to her and get a chance to meet her. We didn't get that chance. But like I said before, you remember the interview I did with her and some of the crew from uh, Night Court, the new iteration of Night Court, or as we can say, the continuation of the story. And we got a chance to find out a little bit about her character uh, back in uh, in season two. And it was an amazing time. But I wanted to have her back on to spend a lot more time with her to find out about her career. How did she get started? What's her journey? I want to get to know her better. And I found out, y'all, she a gamer like me. So you are in for a treat. This conversation was just out of the out of the stars of just awesomeness. We ended up spending more time than what we had. So this is part one of my interview with her. You'll be able to watch part two next week and listen to it next week because we had an amazing time. We had a blast and there was so much to talk about. And I'm so delighted and honored that she accepted my invitation to be on the show. You have seen her on Night Court. And if you are a gamer, a you have seen her on Twitch doing her thing. And she loves to be scared, y'all, on Twitch. I just want y'all to know that. But it's my honor and privilege to bring on this amazing, beautiful, talented woman who's in the entertainment world. I am so honored to have me right now my next guest. This beautiful, talented, amazing person who happens to be a gamer like me. Mm-hmm. We're talking about Lacrita. Lacrita, what's going on? How are you? Nothing much. How you doing? <laughs> I am doing fantastic, Lacrita. I am so happy to talk with you. I shared the experience when I first saw you at <laughs> the uh, at the, the the media tour that that NBC put on. And we didn't get a chance to talk with you, but I had a chance to talk to you on another interview that we did. Um, <laughs> but now to, to have you share your journey, just you as a person, you know, I'm really honored to have you with me. Oh, thank you. I'm honored to be here. <laughs> thank you so much, my dear. So, hey, let's start at the beginning. Lakrita, mm-hmm. when did you know that acting or entertainment was something that you wanted to do? And when you were in school, what did you see yourself doing? As you became an adult. Oh, gosh. I, I thought I was going to go into medicine. Nice. My mother um, was in, in medicine. And um, before she passed, she was working labor and delivery at Truman or at a research medical center in Kansas City, Missouri. So that's what I thought that I was going to do. But I also knew that I loved entertaining people back in like elementary school. <laughs> I was a precocious child, as they call it. Um, uh, 
I was bored in school and my teachers would fuss and complain because I would get my homework done. My work is done. And so now what? And everyone else is still working, but now what? And so, you know, I would be like, did you see the cartoons this weekend? They'd be like, no, I didn't get to see them. Well, let me tell you what happened. <laughs> and so I would act out what happened on those episodes um, on the Saturday morning cartoons. And eventually, you know, my teachers during parent teacher conferences were like, we might think that she is um, hyperactive. We may need to put her on medication. And my mother was like, absolutely not. What you'll do is you'll keep her busy, find her things to do, put her in advanced reading classes, do what you need to do to keep her busy and she'll be fine. And she won't, you know, act in class. <laughs> and that's what they did. So I was in um, back in the day we had what was it like banners and moonbeams? There's just reading courses that they had. Yeah. And so yeah. they put me in the advanced reading. And that was that I was fine. I was occupied. I was busy. And then by the time I got to the sixth grade, I went to the prep school. Uh, Lincoln Prep. And then, you know, I didn't have time to act up because there was a lot of work to do <laughs> and advanced classes. And so that's what kept me on the straight and narrow. But otherwise, yeah, you know, the the teachers would have labeled me. Um, I would have been medicated and I wouldn't have had the imagination that I still have today. So I appreciate it. I had a strong mother. Now, I remember because yeah. when I was growing up, too, you know, I was a hyperactive kid, you know, mm -hmm. and they wanted to they wanted to put me on some medication. But mm -hmm. I was just a, I was a creative dude when I was younger. Yeah. You know, I, I learned to learn to play instruments when I was really young. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I just I was just a creative mind and my mind just went like 100 miles a minute. And I, I was like you in class. I was like, hey, let me tell you about what's going on here. What's going on there? <laughs> Writing songs for my female classmates when I'm in the third oh, grade. You know, OK, it, I was just. <laughs> You know, I was just everywhere, but with mm -hmm. the creative. So to talk to another another creative, you know, I get that. And they always yeah. wanted to medicate people. Oh, what, what did they used to say? Um, I want to find out what makes you tick. You know, back mm -hmm. then, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you mentioned being from Kansas City. Now, yeah. um, your next answer will dictate if this interview is going to go any further. You don't like the Kansas City Chiefs, do you? Huh. I'm just joking. You can, you can go ahead and like the Chiefs. It's fine. It's fine. I do. I'm so it's proud fine. of them. Listen, when I was living in Kansas City, the last time that they had won a championship was the year I was born. Yeah. Yeah. And so now they're doing great. And what I love about Patrick Mahomes is that he's not from Kansas City, but he's doing so much to give back to the town. And that's a beautiful thing. Um, he takes pride in being a Kansas City chief. And I appreciate that because, you know, before there were no what is it? Um, Patrick and my homies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Patrick so and my homies. Yeah. His, yes, his youth program. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. No one had done that. And I was a huge Derek Thomas fan. Um, back in the day, there was a time where I wanted to play football. Really I wanted to be around the boys. That's that's really what that was. <laughs> be around the boys i was like i'm gonna play football with the boys uh and so we would play flag football and that's what they started calling me they called started calling me dt i because i was just running really just running and chasing boys that's all i was doing i wasn't really i <laughs> love it oh, like you, bring, you, bring, you bring in some great memories the, the late great Derek thomas you know i remember yeah. when he got into an automobile automobile accident that left mm -hmm. him paralyzed and that was just a few years after after um I got paralyzed and my heart just went out oh. for him because I, I was like, I, I, I know, I know what he's going through. Mm -hmm. And then, then when he ended up passing away, you know, wow, that, you know, it's re really, man, him and Neil, Neil Smith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. That you bring back, bring back some, I'm, I'm everywhere when it comes to, comes to football. Like yeah. um, I'm a big Eagles fan, but since I've been playing fantasy football, you know, I like everybody now because they own my team. So I got a root. I got a root for. I got a root for a Dallas. I got a root for Dak Prescott. <laughs> he's my quarterback, and that's like yes. that's sacrilegious, right there. You know what I mean? <laughs> or, 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 or if I got like, um, uh, what's my man? Uh, play wide receiver for the Raiders. Used to be with uh, Green Bay. Um, um, he's from California. What is his name? His, his name is escaping right now, but I got a roof for him. I don't like the Raiders. So, you know, <laughs> one of those things with, with fantasy football. But, but, but thank you so much for sharing your, your, your being from Kansas City now. Yeah. You, you live in LA now. So, yes. I'm sure you have some of that LA barbecue. Oh, I'm sorry. You said it right. I have. I'm sorry. Well, the LA, the right. LA barbecue, as we say. Barbecue. barbecue. <laughs> so, between LA and Kansas City, okay, what, what do you say? Kansas City. All right. I've heard that. I've yes. more from Kansas City. You're like, 
Kansas because Kansas City's more about smoking, right? They're about the smoke and you know that ring around there and the yeah. sauce. It's a very saucy barbecue and, and tomato based sauce. Um, so if you don't like that, then that's not going to be for you. There is some good barbecue here. Um, and pl- actually a place that's not too far from my house. They do a great barbecue, but you know, I'm partial, partial to Kansas city. I will ship every once in a while. I'll treat myself to, um, to, uh, Fiorello's and that's the one, that's the one. And they ship and they've got the big crown ribs, just like basically a steak on a bone and the burnt ends and the, um, the black eyed peas or not the black eyed peas, the, uh, the baked beans with the chunks of meat in there. Ugh. Now I'm gonna I'm try that myself now. Now, ha- have you had any hood barbecue? Has anybody take you to the hood? And no the hood barbecue. Okay, that's where I have to go. I gotta find. So I like Fixins downtown. Okay, that's a soul food place. Oh, they yeah. grind their their. Oof, I'm sorry, I did have breakfast, but yeah. I it's getting close to lunchtime now. I know. And, I'm, um, I'm like, hmm. Mm, that brined chicken. They brine their chicken um, for 24 hours before they fry it. Man, and the food comes out so fast. I was so surprised and hot. Just you can't even touch it yeah. when it gets to the table. You got to wait or start on your sides, whatever you want to do. If you really got to eat, eat. But yeah, or just pull it apart and just let it let there the steam go. hit your face. Oh! Yeah, you know, you know who owns Fixins, right? Who? Um, ex Sacramento Kings, uh, KJ uh, Kevin Johnson. Yeah, that's his spot. Whoa, yep. very nice. Player, yeah, that's his spot. So very uh, smart. I know Shaq had it first because Shaq Shaq had his his chicken placed there first, but then uh-huh. Kevin came in and and bought fixings and put brought, brought fixings in there. Yeah, that's the bless you, now, bless you for fixings, man. That's yeah. good. My that's favorite good spot chicken. over there around there, those Flemings though. You give me one of them dry age, them dry age ribeyes over there. Stop. Then, then we talk, and that's the that's the spot, man. Yeah. How can something so ugly be so good? Have you seen yep. the meat in the locker when they when they age it? Yes. You're like, yeah. ooh, should I eat this? And then yeah. you get it, and you're like, mm-hmm. so it forty five days. Just just put it in the in the cooler. No. So <laughs> Don't do it at good. home, though. Don't do it at home. Yeah, I know. I was thinking about doing. It. I said, man, I'm gonna kill myself. I do it. You will. <laughs> get all the botulism, salmonella, E. coli yes. in there. <laughs> Tell me about it. But I'm. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll I'll let you know what hood spots to go to, and you can please, you can check please. it out. And then 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 you then you can let me know. Kansas City are the hood barbecue, all right? Yeah, the hood barbecue yeah it's really gonna be the hood. Anybody who like smokes meat in some kind of metal container, yeah, I mean, you're already winning. I saw yeah. one dude on on Instagram. <laughs> he made a file cabinet into a smoker. I was like, see, ingenuity, ingenuity. You can say what you want to about the hood, yeah. but them those are some geniuses living in there. <laughs> Tell me about it. Tell me, see, we, see, we, 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 see, that's how my mind works. See, my my hyperactive mind. See, I went from <laughs> talking about. Your career to food. <laughs> now, now I'm gonna get back, get back focused now talking about that. Talking yeah. about so so when when you were in these classes and everything and you mm-hmm. you learned that you had this these talents, what did you gravitate to? More more singing, more more acting, more more plays. Well, what were some of the things that you went to first? Mm-hmm. I gravitated more towards the acting part of it. Um, I could always sing, but I sang in a gospel group, the gospel chorale. And I oftentimes compared myself to everybody else in the group. There was like five of us and I didn't sing the way that they sang. Um, And so I kind of put a lot of pressure on myself um, to do what they could do. But, you know, our voices are different and some of them are more athletic and acrobatic and you can do all the riffs and runs. And some of them are just strong, powerful voices. And that's what I had. I um, mean, not to say that they weren't great performers because we, we made some magical moments together and really, you know, to see um, a congregation pour out love towards these, you know, we were in high school, we were kids, um, but we still had a word to share. And so that was a beautiful moment, but that was that. And so as what, as far as what I was um, pursuing was more acting. To be perfectly honest, I prefer plays. Um, I think that's why I'm flourishing so much in film and television is because that makes more sense to me. Musicals, I'm like, why are we singing? But who, who, have we earned this song? And if we haven't earned it, then why are we singing? Um, I think that's why I understood opera and operettas more because everything is sung. But then that makes the spoken words, if there are any spoken dialect um, dialogue in that work, even more powerful because now there's nothing under you. Um, that's why I feel about recit- recits, recitatives before an aria. You know, you have this moment of introspection 
before you now do this performative aria about, oh, I love him, I love him, I love him, I love him for 24 pages. So, um, you know, I, I would love to have more opportunity to do plays because living in the moment with another person or persons on stage with you, with the audience as your other person, um, feeding and driving the story and how you tell it and how different it is every single night. That's, that's what gives me life, to be honest. I'm glad, I'm glad you share that because oftentimes we just look at the, the finished product mm-hmm. ones on stage doing the thing. Like, oh, wow, this is pretty awesome. But, but to see what all goes into that and a person's preference and, and how they prepare themselves to get into this, you know, that, that that's always great to see how the, how the, how the barbecue sauce is made in the, yes, yes, in, yes. in the kitchen, you know what I mean? All the, all the ingredients, the secret ingredients and, mm-hmm. and all the sauce and everything. And mm-hmm. what, what has been the most challenging uh, part of being in, in the entertainment world and, and how did you kind of overcome, overcome them certain challenges? Yeah. There's a lot of disappointment. If I want to be honest, there's a lot of disappointment in anybody's field, but especially um, in the arts field, because you are so vulnerable um, when you go in for audition, even if it's a comedy, like if you're doing things that are um, foolish, as far as you're concerned, if you're commenting on it that way, then, you know, you're vulnerable and you're doing this in front of people, sometimes eight shows a week. Um, And so because you're so open, the nose hit a little bit harder. The yeses are amazing, but the noes really kind of stick with you. And so you have to have a good base around you um, that you can talk things out with, that you can voice your your frustrations with, um, because you can't do it in the room. <laughs> you can't have a meltdown in the room or you'll never work again. But, um, you know, it's nothing personal. That's what you have to also tell yourself at the end of the day. It's nothing personal. And it's funny because... You know, I auditioned so hard. I lived in New York for about 16, 17 years, and there were a lot of no's. And then I think about what the future might be for me because a lot of, of, of projects were looking for star names. They were looking for names. They were looking for stars. They were looking for names. So I was like, well, I have a name. I only use one name, so that's a name. Like, can I just get in the show? <laughs> and so it'll be interesting to see, you know, now that Night Court has been so successful and whatever comes out of that. And even having done second act with Jennifer Lopez and Leah Remini, um, you know, am I a name now? And so is it going to be easier for me to get into projects that weren't seeing me my first, say, five, seven years living in New York? That's that That'll be interesting. But like, you know, I got to Broadway and although that was a triumph, there were many disappointments. One of being, my mom's not here anymore. My mom had died in 2011 um, and my Broadway debut was like 2018. So there was this big gap between, you know, my mother who was my, my biggest cheerleader and these are the things that I had worked so hard towards so that she can see that and be a part of that. And now she's not here. So even with um, Night Court getting picked up for a third season, I was disappointed because my mom's not here, physically not here. Um, and so those, those are things that you have to work through and talk through. And But also you have to realize that that's what's happening with you. Um, and that can be hard sometimes when we get distracted by so many outside forces, but we definitely need to have our time to ourselves to talk to ourselves and figure out what's wrong, what's wrong, what's wrong so we can fix it because we lose a lot of our, our actors and performers because they don't know how to fix what's wrong and they decide to leave and, um, you know, check on your friends, check on, check on your loved ones and make sure that everybody's okay. Cause this is a difficult time in the world across the board. Um, but when you are, a person who wears your heart on your sleeve or you're a creative person or you're um, empathetic. uh, Those are the ones that we have to watch a little closer because sometimes we're good at hiding what's going on with us, um, but where we're really hurting. So I'm glad you, glad you shared that because especially in our community, Mm -hmm. we we were taught, we were taught growing up that you'll get over it. I'll use it. It'll be fine. And Mm -hmm. pray it away. Yeah, one ones look down upon ones seeking seeking professional help or having mental health like days and things like that and praying it away. Yeah, and mm-hmm. things like that. And it's like, you know, it's refreshing now that that as we are this this next generation of of helping the younger generation now saying no, it's okay to have these mental health days. It's okay mm-hmm. to find out what's going on because 
just the external things that are because I, I think I think what happens, um, Lakrita, is that when we look at like things that we are able to do in our career, that we think that that's going to be the key to happiness, that we always going to be happy, mm-hmm. and then and then when that doesn't happen, we say, oh wow, you know, I still got to deal with this over here, this over there, over there. It's like, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, it's like we have to take time for ourselves, and we have to see what's wrong. Because sometimes I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Tell you, Lakrita, I, I feel I feel a certain kind of way, and I'm like, I just need to, you know, fire up the PS5 and, and, <laughs> yes. and, 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 and beat it myself for a moment because I just need to, mm-hmm. I just need mm-hmm. to relax. So I, I'm so glad, so glad, so glad you shared that. And you know, when you when you look at the roles that you've been able to land, uh, mm-hmm. working with some amazing talents over at over at Night Court, and then working with with Leah Remedy. Oh um, on the, on second act, um, what was it like when you got that? When you got both of those roles, were you like, okay, okay, am I getting punked? What's going on? <laughs> yeah, I. So for second act, I was late to uh, to the audition. Don't be late to your auditions, folks. Show you up on time if not early. Don't and, do that. And, and you know, you know, look, I bet, I bet. You know how people are. But I'm like when you come to the door, say, I told you, black folks can't be on time. I bet you somebody <laughs> said that. I, you know, I felt so bad because it was in Queens. I never go to Queens. I lived in the Bronx. It's like, don't you, it takes you a half a day to get to Queens. And so I was late and panicking. And, but I had an, the guy at the reception desk, the security guard, he was like, everything's fine. Just go ahead and sign in. Okay, breathe. You're fine. You're, I was 20 minutes late. You're fine. Everything's fine. You're fine. He, you know, sauntered over and pushed the button for the elevator. The elevator was there when I got down. I said, just take a take a breath. This is where you're going. I said, thank you so much. So, much. so I get upstairs and I peek around the corner and she gives me a one of those. And I was like, oh, shoot. Well, won't be booking this, but I'm going to stay. I'm staying. There was no chairs in the hallway. There was nothing I had to stand. So I did the audition. I call um, my uh, agent at the time, let them know that I don't think it went well. And then a couple of days later, I feel like it was either the next day or a couple of days later, because I wasn't expecting that. I didn't even have a call back. Um, They were like, okay, you booked it. (laughs) And I was like, I thought maybe it was for something else. (laughs) Yeah. A previous audition that I had done for something completely different. They're like, no, no, you're going to be in a movie with J-Lo. And I was like, what is happening? (laughs) Because when they, yeah, I think it was the next day because I had rehearsal the next day. Um, Mm -hmm. I had to leave rehearsal to go to another audition. And he was like, do you even want to go to that? I was like, yeah, I still have to go because I don't know when things are going to start. But he was like, yeah, your first feature film is going to be with Jennifer Lopez and Leah Remini among others. Oh, treat. Oh my goodness. We lost him a couple of years ago to a motorcycle accident, but yeah. he was a lovely guy. His stories, his stories is like, yeah, you know, I, I bought a plane for a dollar. And I was like a plane that you're going to fly in for one dollar. He's like, yeah, I bought a Cessna for a dollar. I was like, okay, tell me the story. He told me the story is a great story, but yeah, he was a lovely guy. So I'm, I'm grateful to have gotten to work with him and Milo Vigmiglia gives the best hugs i wasn't expecting because i'm like oh you know these hollywood people they're you know they're so frail and you know they they stay thin for the camera oh so don't squeeze them too hard like just you know just open your arms and let him lead the hug the the way he yoked me up i was like oh (laughs) i will squeeze you back and he winks at you oh so i started winking too i was like that's a really cool thing to do so you know if i'm talking to somebody as you give a little quick quick little wink yeah but yeah yeah, that was it was a wonderful experience leah's stories were fantastic and just like and she would just be sitting there like you know i would go to auditions in sweatpants don't go to auditions in sweatpants folks unless (laughs) unless it calls for you to be in a relaxed kind of situation go in your sunday best you don't have to wear a hat or anything but you know dress up for your auditions but anyway um the but she just had this like i care about what i do but i also am not thirsty for it because that desperation can creep into our work sometimes. And if we have an element of F you, insert the, you know, the, the real words there, um, in our work, that takes some pressure off of us and we're able to like really get into the character. And that's, you know, that's how she approached the, her early days of auditions. I would love to hear, it, I don't even know if she auditions for th- stuff now, but I would definitely love to hear what her approach is now and just how 
Um, how much wisdom she imparted on me. I reached out to her when I booked this to say, you know, is there any words of wisdom that you have for me going into my first series regular on a network show? And she sent me this long text back and that was really cool. And, you oh. know, we, I, I, I appreciate that because um, coming from Kansas City, being a rough and tumble precocious kid, like I never in my wildest dreams thought that this would be a part of my story. So... That was part one of my amazing conversation with Lacrita. Don't forget, part two is going to drop next week. Was it amazing getting a chance to know her better, how she got started, where she's from, and all the amazing things? Well, don't forget to stay tuned for part two uh, next week. When we get back, we're going to be joined by another talented, amazing woman. And... She's part of a story of something that really took this nation by storm decades ago. You want to know what it is? Well, you got to come back after these messages. So don't go nowhere. What do they say on a Saturday morning? Cartoons. After these messages, we'll be right back. Don't go nowhere. Ain't your average entertainment show. More than entertainment than what's on the screen. Connecting dots on what you see.